Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to check out our very first Dino Zoom model. I have waited a very long time to get a look at this one in hand. It is a species of dinosaur brand new to my collection, something I've never had the pleasure of owning prior, and unfortunately, it has actually, it's not unfortunate that it has this, it has a really cool window look to the packaging, which I really do like, but unfortunately, the glare coming off of it is making it nearly impossible to see the figure you know through the camera you really can't make out much of anything as far as the detailing of the figure because the light is just glaring off of it so badly but you can see again Catidocus right here we have the species title which again brand new species to my collection absolutely love that aspect and then we also have the dino zoo logo over here on the underside again some more dino zoo logos showing up here and there another nice one over here on the side up here on the top, it does state, and even though it's upside down now, but it does state Catidocus, again, figure in 135th scale, so we know the scale of the figure. And then here on the back, a gorgeous, gorgeous looking illustration of the Catidocus. That is absolutely beautiful. Really nice backdrop there behind the dinosaur as well. You can also kind of see the DinoZoo logo showing up there in the middle of the area there. So this is again very exciting if you ask me. It's awesome because I don't always get to introduce brand new companies to my channel, to my reviews, and today is a great day because we get to do that. And we also get to at the same time include a brand new species into my collection. So without further ado, let's pop this box open and check out this beautiful Catidocus. So once you actually open the packaging, you've got a little card in here that states the name of the species and actually gives you quite a bit of information information on the species which is definitely fun to you know read up on take note of and then it also states that it is part of the Morrison Foundation and then here on the back you've got the Dino Zoo logo and then you're also given yet another really nice illustration of the dinosaur just an absolutely beautiful image and I love that all of the images used sport the same color scheme that we see on the actual figure so that is also a huge plus really nice extras as far as this release goes and then we've got ourselves our Catidocus figure itself and and look at how beautiful that is. I really love the sculpt. I've stated this throughout the last few months in every news video that I covered this figure in. But I also really like the paint scheme. I think it was a very cool, kind of a unique looking paint scheme that they had come up with for the figure. And that stands true here with the figure in hand. I definitely think that the paint scheme is really nice. And the actual paint application as well is quite nicely done. You can obviously tell that the figure is quite small. It's a smaller sauropod. And uh, that's never a bad thing. You can, of course, include this figure into your collection. Well, not, I guess, anymore because it's actually sold out. But you could have included this figure into your collection and uh, not had it take up too much room, which is, you know... Definitely a good thing. I love large dinosaur figures, but every once in a while, it's nice to have a smaller one as well. And as far as this Catidocus goes, again, nice, small, kind of a compact size figure here as far as a sauropod goes. So without further ado, let's jump straight to a closer look at it right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Catidocus, you can see straight away the dinosaur is posed with its mouth open. So it is clearly letting out some sort of a vocalization. The inside of the mouth is actually quite nicely painted, given a nice blackish coloration, but you can see the tongue is painted out there with a pinkish tone of color. Again, the dinosaur is exceptionally small. You can see how small the head is there in comparison to my fingers, so it's uh, got some pretty nice precise paintwork for being such a small figure. You can see as far as the head sculpt goes, in general it is very nicely sculpted out, but we also sport some really nice tones of green in the head area of the dinosaur. The eye is painted with a yellow, given a black pupil. They've also nicely dry brushed out a lot of the coloration here on the figure so that it helps to make the detail pop. And on a figure this small, you know, you're not going to expect any type of incredibly huge scales or skin texture or anything. So I think the dry brushing was definitely a good idea. The figure really benefits from the dry brushing because, again, with a figure this small, the detail really helps to pop with the dry brushing. You can see that as we move along, we have a nice kind of lighter coloration here for the lower jaw leading down into the throat, and that kind of stripes up throughout the course of the neck, which I think really gives it a very nice flashy appearance. But all of the colors and the tones of, you know, greens and whites and stuff were more actually like off-whites used really helps to give the dinosaur a naturalistic look at the same time as, you know, giving it a flashy look. 
you can see that we do have a darker green at the top of the body, but then as we transition down to the lower part of the neck, and this follows through there in the head as well, we have a lighter shade of green. And you can see in general, again, as we move down the course of the neck, if my camera would focus on it, that the skin texture is extremely fine, but really, really nicely done. And then as we reach down here into the body, you've got the shoulder blade there protruding very nicely from the skin. You can really pick up on how nice the actual skin texture is, I think, a lot more down here in the body. Like up here in the back, you know, running along the spinal column, you can really pick out some very nice scale detail up there that, again, that dry brushing has made uh, jump out at us a little bit better there. As you move down the course of the front leg, again, the structure of the leg looks really quite nice. You can really pick up on some nice muscle definition moving down the course of the leg. You've got a very nice foot sculpt here in the front of the dinosaur. You can see the nail sticking out of the side of the foot right there. And um, man, my camera is really having a hard time focusing on this one. But you can pick out the elbow and everything right there. Some nice skin creasing at the joint of the leg as you lead back up into the leg, into the shoulder and everything. You can also see a lot of really nice skin wrinkles and skin creasing and stuff here in the lower part of the stomach region of the Catidocus. You can see also, again, as we transition, we have this very nice, actually quite a few different shades of green throughout the course of the body. But as you transition down, it transitions to kind of like a mustard yellow, sort of a brown. This off-white does still continue throughout the entire underside, but it's like the absolute lowest mid area of the underside of the dinosaur where you see that. You can also see again, like I had stated earlier, the spinal column is nicely shown here running along the back of the dinosaur. You can pick up on the hip bone right there. Again, some very nice muscle definition moving down the back leg. I love the walking pose for the dinosaur. It's nothing crazy or dramatic. It's just a nice natural walking pose as it's walking along. You can see the kneecap right there in the front of the leg, and all of the movement of the dinosaur, I think, is quite nicely shown in the sculpt. You've got another nice foot sculpt back here. I don't know if the goal was to not paint the nails back here, or if the intentions are to make it look like the nails are kind of a similar color to what we see on the foot, but I don't see any type of difference in color on the nails of the dinosaur specifically. But again, as you get closer, like you can really see if my camera focuses on it, how nice that skin texture is that looks really good running down the course of the leg and yet again that nice dry brushing has been added to make the detail pop and also you can see again like some light hints of greens and stuff throughout even these uh, brownish yellowish sort of tones of the dinosaur as you move back up here again running out into the tail you can see a few more skin wrinkles and skin creases right there and then we lead out the length of the tail you start to see kind of like some faint striping and stuff kind of like some splotchy striping of some whites before the tail transitions to a green but that kind of splotchy white continues as we lead out the length of the tail and you can see again that's a very very thin tail I'm a little frightened to really mess with it too much I don't want to break it because I definitely feel like if you're not too careful you could definitely snap that tail pretty easily considering how long and thin it is there's a very nice curve to the tail not anything like dramatic or anything like that it's just a very slight curve but that as well again looks very nice as we look here over at the opposing side again you can see the head sculpt looks great yet again we see our dinosaur letting out some sort of a vocalization the eyes are yet again painted very nicely if my camera would focus on it really really does not want to focus on this dinosaur as you take a look here at the top of the head you can also pick out the nostrils there and the snout Man, my camera just doesn't like the tones of green, I think, used on this figure. But as you move down the course of the neck on this side, you can see a few kind of creases and wrinkles right there behind the head. And then again, the skin texture looks really good over here. Like the dry brushing really made that skin texture pop. Honestly, every ounce of detail pops really nicely on this side. You can yet again see the nice tones of green. Again, there's that nice curve in the neck. Also, not anything too sharp or anything. Just a slight turn in the neck of the Catidocus. As you move down the course of the body, you see some more really nice creasing and stuff right here. As we reach into the body, you can really see the shoulder like kind of flexing and tensing right there. As the dinosaur is, you know, walking along, that leg is just about to pick up as the other leg is kind of setting down. So there's like a lot of tensing on that leg. And you can really see that, I think, right here in the shoulder area. Very nice attention to detail in the part of dino zoo you can also see more of that beautiful skin texture again those nice scales which you can absolutely see up here in the back and even leading down here into the stomach region of the catidocus as you move down the course of this leg you can see the elbow again due to the bend in the leg right here the elbow is actually protruding quite nicely let's see again that foot sculpt looks very nice you see less of the stomach on this side because the legs are kind of pushed together kind of bunching the skin up a little bit so you see more of those skin wrinkles and skin folds but 
the legs kind of obscure the stomach a little bit more on this side more so than the opposing side you can again pick up on the hip bone a little bit as well as some more nice muscle definition the kneecap as well as the really nice foot sculpt there's some nice creasing there in the ankle as well and then we lead up here into the tail you can kind of see the skin stretching off of the tail because this leg is pulling so far forward as you lead out the length again of that really nice really thin tail as we take a look here at the underside again detail wise it looks really good i believe we have a cloaca present right there but it's a little hard to tell because the dinosaur is really quite small but Honestly, it is an absolute pleasure to finally own a Catidocus, and in general to finally own a Dino Zoo model. I've been kind of promoting this line for many months now, so it's really exciting to finally have a piece from their line in my collection. Now, as far as the size goes, again, I've stated numerous times, and you can obviously tell for yourself that this is a pretty small model. For a length, you were looking at a little over 8 inches, or about 20 and a half centimeters. And then for a height, the highest point definitely would be the head. You are looking at a little over two inches or closing in at about five and a half centimeters, somewhere in that area for a size comparison. Here are our usual review comparison suspects with Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon in comparison to our Caddy Docus. And you can really tell now how small the figure is in comparison to these guys. Like, especially when you look at it over here in comparison to Muldoon, who again is not a very large figure, or even the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, also not a very large figure, but I really think that honestly looking at it in comparison to these figures makes this Catidocus even more impressive because you can see that the size again and the amount of detail and paintwork included is a lot more impressive when you realize just how small it is. And to really iron out just how small this dinosaur is, as well as bring in a Morrison Foundation friend, we've got ourselves a Takara Tomy Stegosaurus, and you can again really see that it honestly matches up fairly nicely, like size-wise as far as what you would probably get if you were to get a Catidocus from Takara Tomy. I feel like this is a similar size of what you would get size-wise there, so... That again should show you just how incredibly impressive the size aspect of this Catidocus is. And actually for another comparison, and just because it's sitting here, I might as well throw it in here for a size comparison because it is a gorgeous figure. We have the Cintosaurus from PNSO. So again, that's one of the smaller PNSO releases that we've had in quite some time. And you can really see that it, you know, quite nicely dwarfs the Catidocus here from Dino Zoo. And then for another comparison, probably the most popular or one of the most popular beasts. Actually, I think at this point we'd probably say the Triceratops is the most popular because it seems like everybody went ahead and grabbed one of those. But one of the most popular is the Zuni Ceratops from the Beasts of the Mesozoic line. And again, this is also the smallest one from that line. Also really quite drastically outsizing the Catidocus here from Dino Zoo. And then for one final comparison, another Morrison Foundation buddy here, we've got ourselves the Diplodocus. This is the Safari LTD Diplodocus in comparison to our Catidocus from Dino Zoo. And you can really see, again, a pretty massive size difference, but I cannot dare deny how cool these figures would look walking together if there were like a group of sauropods hanging out and you know, we had maybe our little Catidocus buddy following a Diplodocus. They definitely look really awesome together, that's for sure. So this Dino Zoo Catidocus is definitely another really fun figure, another brand new figure released from a brand new company, so that's super exciting. Again, we are in probably the best time in history, potentially, when it comes to receiving dinosaur collectibles. Like, there has never been a time period ever that you could just acquire so many different species from so many different companies. It is amazing right now to be a dinosaur fan. And again, this is just another example of why, because another brand new company jumping up here onto the scene, Dino Zoo, and they have so much potential, I think, because this is a great first release, and they have a lot of plans as far as future releases go. And initially, you can kind of get a feel for a company, especially in this case, because you get a Catidocus, which is a very obscure species of dinosaur, something that... You know, you don't really see too often our companies kind of finding more obscure species of dinosaur and 
releasing them in figure form. Most times, most companies kind of want to go for the more popular ones straight away to obviously benefit from the popularity of those dinosaurs, whereas Dino Zoo has chosen to go the route of more obscure to give us a species of dinosaur that we don't always have the opportunity to buy. So kudos to them for going that route. And as far as their figure goes, I really think it is a fantastic first release. Again, sculpt-wise, it is beautiful. A very nice walking pose for the dinosaur as it's just kind of strolling along, maybe letting out some sort of a vocalization. Maybe it's calling out to someone else in the group of dinosaurs that it is traveling with. Who knows exactly, but I definitely like the pose. The fine detail as well is extremely nice. Very impressive considering its size. They have done a great job of applying the paintwork as well to make sure that you highlight all of that detail and you can see how nice it is because again, as far as the size of the figure goes, with it being so small, you really could miss how nice the detail is if the paintwork isn't as nice as it is. So if it were just like flat paintwork and they had just thrown a few colors on it and called it a day, you probably wouldn't notice how nice the actual detailing is, but because they've gone ahead and kind of benefited from some nice dry brushing, it has made the detail pop and you really see how nice the detail is. So they did a great job on the pose. They did a great job on the fine detail and they did a great job on the paint application and the tones of color they've used also look really nice and natural. It's not any type of like a boring overused paint scheme either. I've really never seen this type of a paint scheme so they've done a great job as far as choosing that as well so really nice very first figure again from dino zoo unfortunately i believe this is sold out so if you were interested in picking this up you could potentially reach out to dino zoo to see if they have any left but i don't think they do at this point i will include a link in the description to where you can contact them though on facebook and this will of course allow you the opportunity to kind of follow along with them to see what future releases they have coming because i know they definitely have plans to release a lot of really cool figures at some point in the very near future Regardless, this is a great figure, so psyched to own it, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.